wonderful uh, w this wouldn't be possible without their sponsorship, and we are really appreciative of that. Beautiful evening, temperature about 73 degrees, uh, no wind at all. Looks like it's really a, a, a great night to play football. Uh, players are fired up. They're, they're anxious to get out there. Uh, both teams, a little bit in, uh, you know, uh, minor injuries coming into this, uh, some bumps and bruises. Coach Cobb was telling me uh, one of the kids banged his shoulder pretty bad on a, uh, a tackling drill, things that you want to see. But you got to understand, a lot of these, some of these kids haven't played in a while, the ones that didn't play in the spring, I should say, and they're out here uh, trying to you know, get back into shape, so to speak. Yeah, I think one of the things you have to worry about, at least in, in the past, the first couple of weeks, you see a lot of kids cramping up because they're, they're not accustomed to it. But Tonight, I mean, this is like perfect football weather. Uh, a lot of tradition here at All High Stadium. You know, great venue to play at. Great venue to watch football at. Um, should be an exciting night. Burgard is going to kick off. East War is set to receive. Looking back at uh, uh, Philippac Jackson, set to return for East Aurora. East Aurora, one thing we expect them to do, they're, they're going to move the ball around a lot. A lot of guys are going to touch, get their hands on the ball. They uh, pretty much run a spread uh, type option offense. Get a lot of players active in the game, so we'll see how that shakes out. And we are underway at All High Stadium. Ball's received at the 15-yard line, brought up close over the 30, the 35. Just shy of the 40, maybe they are going to mark it down. At the 40-yard line, it was Dylan Austin, or Austin Dylan rather, uh, no, Austin Dillon on the return for East Aurora. Yeah, number 14, Dylan Austin with the he's a receiver, kick returner, cornerback. You probably see him quite a bit. Clear his name quite a bit tonight. First and ten for the Blue Devils. Ball spotted on the 40-yard line. Shotgun formation, one back in the backfield. End in motion to the left. Hand off to the right side, sweeping. He's got the edge. A first down and more. Nice run there by Bryce Clothier. Clothier was, is, is expected to be a workhorse tonight. Yeah, nice run there, got to the outside. Uh, beat uh, Rival Marks to the corner there and was able to get about 10 more yards because of, of that. Good first start for uh, East Aurora. First and 10, they'll spot it at the Burgard 47 yard line. Shotgun formation again for the Blue Devils. Four wide receivers set. Waiting for the snap. And in motion to the left. Sweep quarterback's keeper to the left side. And he's not going to get much. Looked like uh, Kevin Walker was there with the stop for the Bulldogs. Good job by Kevin Walker not biting on it, staying home. Let the quarterback come to him. And made a nice uh, uh, open field tackle there. Ball spotted on the 46. Second down and nine for East Aurora. Two back split in the backfield. Quarterback under center. Oh, movement there for Burgard. Look like, yeah, Doug Washington uh, crossed the neutral zone. He'll be flagged for an offsides. I think those are the things that you, you really got to be careful about, especially early going. You know, you got to be more disciplined than that. Second and nine to second and four. That's, that's night and day right now. Second down and four. Ball spot on the 41 yard line. Under center. And off to the left side. He'll be close to a first down. With number 25, James Tresden. Uh, got about six yards for the first down. Good job by Issa Roy pushing the Burgard defensive line back. Um, saw a lot of blue jerseys going backwards. That'll be enough for an East Aurora first down. 
Shout out to today's officials, referee Kenny Harris, umpire Tom English, headlinesman Eric Mazjajewski, line judge Mark Norton, and back judge Dan Foucaine. First and 10 for the Blue Devils. Shotgun, back to pass, throwing it out to the left side. Ball is tipped, incomplete, broken up there by number five for Burgard, Hayes Zaire. I'm sorry, Zaire Hayes. Hayes read that play nicely, saw where it was going, anticipated the route, got his hand up there and tipped it away. Yeah, not, not a horrible pass, but a, a better defensive play by, uh, by Hayes, getting his hand in at the last second, knocking it away. Shotgun, end in motion to the left, fakes the handoff, quarterback keeper on the right side, brought down maybe a yard gain for Eaglin. Great defensive play, was it? Doug Washington stayed home there, didn't bite on the, on the option that the quarterback was running, uh, and let the quarterback run right into him. Great defensive play there by Washington. 9.34 remaining in the quarter. Ball spotted on the 33-yard line. It'll be third down and nine for the Blue Devils. I'm not sure we have, um, Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Fire in the shotgun. He's going to keep it. Tries to cut it back up the middle, breaks some tackles. He should have an East Aurora first down. So I thought the play was dead there. He had him dead in the backfield, and, and um, Fryer just made a great play, put his foot in the ground, went forward, got 11 yards there, enough for a first down. Great run there. Washington on the tackle for Burgard. East Aurora with a nice opening drive deep into Burgard territory. Ball spotted on the 25-yard line, first down and 10. Back to pass. Throws it out to his right, short pass to the running back. Breaking tackles, he's got room. He's in for the touchdown. Bryce Clothier. With the touchdown for the Blue Devils. Great play by, by Fryer there. Was very patient there, waiting for the play to develop. And number 23, Bryce Corbio came through underneath, almost like a, like a mini screen, and then nothing but daylight. Great, great can't ask for a better first drive if you're Aurora. Throw the Blue Devils on the board. They'll go for the point after. As a coach, you hate giving up a long drive on the uh, after the opening kickoff. Absolutely. Sometimes it can be a, a total uh, uh, deflator for your team. Handoff up the middle, stopped immediately and brought down. Rashad with a tackle. Especially when you had him third and ten, too, and you had him in the backfield with the quarterback out of way. But that being said. It's over and done with. burger has got to move on now. Or get their offense oh, on the... the touchdown, Tom. They didn't get the touchdown. He didn't? Wasn't a touchdown. What? Okay. I apologize. We thought they were going to be two. Yeah, he did. The official showed touchdown. Well, new life for Burger. <laughs> new life for Burger. exactly. <laughs> Shotgun, back to pass. Throws it out to the left side. Incomplete. I think there was a miscommunication there. Yeah, Fryer thought that uh, that Demonikowski was, was going to cut to the corner, which was actually open if he would have cut over there. but just didn't Looked like he cut his route short. Exactly, yeah. So, ball spotted on the five-yard line, third down for East Aurora. I think you'll find earlier in the season it's a little bit harder to get on the same page as your receivers, and that just comes with, with playing. Four receivers set, end in motion to the right. 
Hand off to the left side. Clothier easy, untouched. This time he is in for the touchdown. This time we're sure he got it. We're pretty sure. Unless there's a flag down. Coach said Clothier was going to be there. And now they'll go for the point after. <laughs> Waiting for the snap. Put down, the kick is up. It's good. East Aurora seven, Burgard nothing with 7.33 remaining in the quarter. We're gonna take a break, we'll be back after this. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love the in-home. Are you in pain from a no-fault car accident? Don't wait. Call RES Physical Medicine and Rehab today and take advantage of our 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. One of our medical professionals will see you within 48 hours. RES offers DXD imaging for a more accurate diagnosis in less time. This allows our doctors to coordinate the most effective treatment plan to get you on your way to recovery faster. Feel better with RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. Click or call today to learn more. We're back at All High Stadium. Tony Caligiuri along with Tim Chifa. Burgard trailing 7-0, 733 East Aurora with a beautiful opening drive to start this game. You can't ask for a better opening drive if you're the East Aurora coaching staff. Throwing in a mix of, of runs, passes, quarterback sneaks, a little bit of everything there. Burgard's got to put it behind them now and, and move forward. You think about what it does for a team morale. You come out there and you're having success right off the bat. That, that's a morale booster. That's that's the kind of thing that, that keeps kids excited. You know what I mean? I mean, they, they must have been thinking about that drive for, for two months now. You know, I mean, that, that first drive, that, that's that's all they can think about. The quarterback, his nerves are gone now. Made a couple of good pass or uh, good runs. Um but on the other on the other the other side, Burgard's, you know, they also got a they had him, you know, third and ten. You know, so it wasn't that bad. They almost had an interception. So just gotta tweak it a little bit, put it behind you now and go back to work. So they got a penalty or Tony. Nope, just move them back. First down and ten. They'll spot it at the twenty yard line. Burgard breaking huddle. One back in the backfield. And spread out. Oh, a bad snap over the quarterback's head. Loose ball at the five. Burgard recovered it, avoiding complete disaster as the snap just sailed over the quarterback's head. Eaglin did a good job of uh, recovering and not letting East Aurora uh, pick it up and go for yeah, that, a that, touchdown. That could have been that could have been disaster. They got to take a breath now, relax, you know, get the nerves out of the way, and then you know, go go to work here. Just got to calm down here. And again, they haven't had much practice time before the season right. starts. Try to go with a counter on the left side, and met by a host of East Aurora defenders. Right there to stop him. No gain. Yeah, nice play. He didn't make the tackle, but Jack Brown had him in the backfield. Made the, the running of the receiver cut back the other way right into the to the arms of about three other players. Uh. Third down and 22 for the Bulldogs. Do you have any third down and 22 plays in your playbook? Throw it as far as you can and hope you get a penalty. <laughs> the duck and chuck. <laughs> Back to pass, rolling out, short pass, incomplete. In and out of the hands of number 10, Rashad, I mean, uh, Knox. 
Yeah, good pass there. Probably wouldn't have made the first down, but it would have gave him a little more breathing room for the punt. Again, you got to wonder if this is part, part, you know, part of those uh, nerves early on, the bad snap, a, a, a missed pass that hits you in the hands. Yeah, absolutely. First game jitters. First, you know, they, they don't scrimmage like they used to. And you know, no more scrimmage on Saturdays. So this is the first time that they're playing against another team. So you're gonna you're gonna get some of that stuff. Medina Mustangs starting their season off uh, right. Robert Arnold took the kickoff, went 90 yards to the house, and then uh, Iverson Poole with a two-point conversion, and they lead time in eight to nothing. We got to see Poole uh, last spring, and uh, I was super impressed with that Medina team. So not surprised to see them starting out right. Now you got Bishop Timon coming in there. New head coach, Joey Licata, left for uh, UB. Shout out to the Bulls with a huge uh, win last night, putting up 69 points. That's a good way to start. Yeah, it is. Good punt there by, by Berger. Got a nice roll back to about the, looks like about the 45 yard line. So not bad from their own end zone. 6-11 remaining in the quarter. Ball spotted on the 45-yard line of Burgard. Four receivers set for East Aurora. Back to pass. Throwing it up the middle. Incomplete. Too far. For his intended wide receiver, Ethan Healy. Yeah, Healy had a step on the cornerback there, but um, Fryer just overshot him a little bit. Too much mustard on that one. A little first year Josh Allen there, right? Too much zip <laughs> on that one. Second down and 10 for the Blue Devils. Two receivers set, one back in the backfield. Fire back to pass. Looks like it's going to be a screen to Clothier on the left side. He's got Rome. Crosses the 25, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, East Aurora. Yep, there is a flag on the play, so I'm not sure who it's on. Oh, yep, I see it. And they got a hold. Coming back. Holding call is going to bring that one back. That was a nice play. Regardless if there was a hold, yeah. it was a nice play. Yeah, set up really nice by the quarterback, kept going backwards. Remaining in the quarter. You know, this is a great stadium, but they do have big posts that get in the <laughs> way and can't see. So not much. It's going to be third down. Ball spotted at the 38. This will be third and about 20 or so, I believe, right? At least. Oh, back to, oh looks like it's picked. Brought back to the 30. Let's see, number two for Burgard. Kevin Walker. Walker with a nice pick. Step. Turn, turn around right away, right? You get, you get scored on in your first drive. 
three three and out on your on your on your offensive uh, possession. But that's the way to get going back in this game. Absolutely, Put everything around right there. Defense needed to make a play, and they did. You know, and I know a lot of people say, "Well, it's early in the game." Well, early in the game sets the tone for the rest of the absolutely. game. Absolutely. First down to ten for the Bulldogs. Ball spotted on the thirty-yard line. Shotgun. Handoff right up the middle, breaking tackles. May have enough for a first down. Lamar Hampton with the carry. Nice hole there, nice run. Good cutback. Great first, first run there for Hampton. Hampton's a tough runner. They've got some size in the line. There's some big boys. They are there. big. I was up uh, talking with Coach before the game, and, yeah, those boys are huge. Hand off to Hampton again. He went C-gap. Maybe a couple of yards. Harder than a couple of yards. Broke about four tackles to get those couple of yards. So. The Burgard has seemed to calm down a little bit now, you know, Got their, got their feet beneath them now and ready to get this game going now. Sometimes all you need to do is let the big boys get out there, get physical, push people yeah. around, let a running back get behind them, get some positive yards, and then it starts to snowball from there. Three receivers set, two backs in the backfield, shotgun formation, handoff, Hampton on the, left, on the right side, mm. bulldog someone over, He'll get it down about the eight. It's gonna be a couple yards short of a first down. Third down and short for Burgard. 3.30 remaining in the opening quarter. You got two, two downs here to get one yard, so I mean, you're, you're, you're gonna go for it either way, so try to get positive yards on this play here. Just watch out for a quarterback sneak to get the first down. We'll keep our eye on Eaglin on this play, see what he does. Shotgun. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Eaglin keeps it up the middle. He's battling, he's gonna be close. One referee says touchdown. Eaglin crossing the goal line, getting it in there for the Bulldogs. Nice run, good push, good push back by the offensive line there, and good patience by the quarterback. Just They'll now go for the extra point. You're not going to see a kicker come out. <laughs> they'll go for. Uh, they'll bring the offense. Back to pass, throws it into the corner, incomplete. Ball was too far for uh, Kevin Walker. East Aurora seven, Burgard six. We're gonna take a break, we'll be back after this. When you're ready to buy a home, start your search at howardhanna.com. You'll be the first to see new listings, find similar properties, and connect with a local Howard Hanna agent. Get started today at howardhanna.com. We're back here at All High Stadium. Tony Caligiuri, Tim Chifa. WNY Athletics presents high school football. Burgard taking on East Aurora. East Aurora with a 7-6 lead. Howard Hanna, our sponsors, thank you. And thank you for tuning in. So, Tony, now we got to see how East Aurora bounces back. They, they controlled the, the first part of the first quarter very handily, went right down the field. 
three and out defensively and then had some adversity. Now they threw an interception, Burrow came right back and scored. So basically a new ball game now, and let's see how East Aurora responds. Oh, if I'm East Aurora, I'm coming back with a heavy dose of Bryce Clothier. Absolutely. Oh. Fumble the kickoff, loose ball recovered and downed at about the 25 yard line. Looked like uh, Jackson Philippak came down with it for East Aurora. Two guys like, you know, I got it. No, I got it. Yeah, right. and, uh, <laughs> and, and Wall we talk, winds up on the carpet. We talked about this earlier, but it's it's the first game little things. Fumble on a snap, fumble on a kickoff. You know, those are things that they're, they're going to drive coaches nuts, but it's going to happen early in the season. You've know, you got to work out those kinks. Hey, even though they played in the springtime, we do wrap it up about the uh, end of April, was it, for the end of the season? Then they had all that time off, but they didn't get enough time right. to get ready for the fall season. And, and most teams didn't scrimmage, so this is the first you know real action that they've had. First and ten for the Blue Devils. Hand off to the right side. Clothier gets to the outside. He's got a first down, and he will rumble out of bounds past the 40. Good hard run there, running downhill. He's tough to bring down, Zone. He's a good runner. 205 pounds, solid. With some speed, that's, that's, a, that's a big kid coming at you. They say he went it out of bounds at about the 38. First and 10, East Aurora, 222. Left in the opening quarter, seven to six is our score. Blue Devils on top of the Bulldogs. Full house backfield, under center, handoff to the left side, cuts it back to the middle, very little game, maybe a yard. Host of Bulldogs there on the stop. Yeah, good, de good defensive stance by Burgard, holding their ground there, didn't bite for the, for the, you know, the outside fake reverse, he cut it back in, they stayed home. Good defensive stand there. Second down and eight for East Aurora. Shotgun now. Back to pass. He's got him open. 11, he's wide open. The 30, the 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, East Aurora. Lux Fiegel with the touchdown. Yeah, really good job by, by Fryer there. Looking off the cornerback to the right side. And that, that made Burrard kind of shift to their left, and it left uh, it left Fiegel wide open down the left side of the, of the field. There was nobody within 10 yards yeah. of him. So you wanted to know how was East Aurora going to answer back? Just like that. Can't get much better than that. No, you can't. Real nice job by Fryer, too. You know, after throwing an interception, come right back, you know, look off the first receiver, find your wide open receiver down. You know, that's, that's the way you want your quarterback to bounce back right there. The snap, the put down, the kick is up, and it's good. So East Aurora takes a 14 to six lead over Burgard, 129 remaining. The WNY Athletics presents high school football. Coverage is expanding in the uh, high school universe, and especially with the coverage. You can join me on Thursday nights. I'll be with uh, former ECC coach Scott Pilkey. And we'll be on WNYO Channel 49, broadcasting high school football on TV. Mark Johnson will be on the sidelines reporting. Looking forward to this. This is going to be a lot of fun. If you've ever sat down and talked to Coach Pilkey, wow. You get him going on football, and you better put your seatbelt on and your chin strap because you're in for a ride. So we're looking forward to that. Game starts next Thursday. In fact, and that'll be Sweet Home at Niagara Wheatfield kickoff, 7 o'clock. Great to see the area getting some more exposure going to Thursday night games. You know, it's you know, anytime you can get more kids on TV and more exposure, that's great for the area. I think back to when I played for Burgard, the only kind of coverage you had was uh, the newspaper yeah. and some selected high nights on the, uh, on the local uh, TV news. Right, right. 
There were no talk shows. There was no uh, podcast, no blogs, no uh, Facebook pages, none of that. Adolfia but, would do a game every once in a while, right? <laughs> right. So it is. It's great. I mean, these kids work so hard, and it's nice to be able to give them some recognition. 124 remaining in the half. 14 to 6 is our score. First down and 10. Ball spotted on the 38 yard line. Yeah, I would, I would expect Burgard, Burgard to give a you know a large dose of some Lamar Hampton here. He, you know he was uh, the workhorse on the on the last series besides the touchdown. Um, but look for him to get the ball a few times on this drive. Four receivers set. Shotgun, back to pass, quick out to the left side, incomplete. Good play there by, uh, by Clothier also, he plays cornerback too, but good job uh, getting right in on the play, not giving the Burgard receiver a chance to catch the ball there. He, you know, I understand what Burgard's trying to do. They want to get the ball to one of their faster players in the open and let him use his athletic ability. But you got to catch it first. Yep, yep. Second down and 10. 121 left in the first quarter. Under center. Hand off to Hampton up the middle. And he'll brought, be brought down at the 40. Short gain there for Burgard. Good play by... Uh, Jack Brown there, number 75, getting in the backfield with the initial hit, slowing down Hampton there. Under a minute remaining in the quarter. Burgard taking their time, breaking huddle. Three receivers, rolling out to his right, throws, and it's caught. Just past the first down marker, looked like number four, McNeil Brashen, with the reception and a Burgard first down. A good play by the quarterback, extending the play with his legs there, waiting for the receiver to get open underneath, dumped it out just at the first down mark. And a big first down there. Probably be the last play before the end of the quarter. Looks like Bird Guy's just going to let it run out. That's an exciting first quarter, Tony. Sure. I mean, three touchdowns already. I mean, that's that's the way, that's what we want to see, right? Some good defensive plays. We're seeing great plays out of the running backs. Yep. Deep pass touchdown. I mean, got a little bit of everything so far. Well, that ends the first quarter. East Aurora with a 14-6 lead over Burgard. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. Paul Wolf Agency, how can I help? I got a problem. I got a big problem. The house flooded overnight, everything's destroyed, and I don't know what to do. You can relax. The wolf is on his way. What's the damage? It's bad. As opposed to good? It's 20 minutes away. I'll be there in 10. You're Teddy? Yes, sir. I'm Paul Wolf. I solve problems. Oh, good, because I got a big one in here. May I come in? <laughs> Absolutely. Mr. Wolf, can I get you a cup of coffee?
have fumble on the kickoff. So hopefully get those out of the way and get going here. Uh, about midfield here for Burgard, first and 10. Back to pass, throw to the left side, incomplete. Intended for Brashon McNeil. That's two that he's dropped so far. Yeah, th three drop passes in, in total now for Burgard. That's, that can get a little frustrating for the not only the coaches, but the quarterback too. But got to relax and got to catch it before you can move. Two receivers under center. Hand off to the left side on the sweep. Cuts it upfield, breaking up to the outside. The 30, the 25, dragged down at about the 20. Jay-Z on Knox with the carry for Burgard on, on the reverse. Yeah, great play there by Burgard. Get it to your speedy receiver and let him cut it upfield. Uh, saving. Touchdown saving tackle by, by East Aurora, but about great game there by, uh, by Knox. Knox showing his speed. A little bit of elusiveness, uh, great job. First and 10, Burgard, ball spotted on the 24 yard line. Egan in the shotgun. Hands off to Hampton, bounces it to the right side. Maybe a four or five yard gain there, Tim? Yeah, not good yardage there. Burgard's got a, a really big fullback. You see number 44, uh, Washington. Doug Washington. Six foot, 220 junior fullback. You know, you don't see a lot of fullbacks used in, in today's football, but he's leading the way on a, on a lot of these uh, on a lot of these runs. It's a big kid. Reminds me of number 34 back in the day, Tony Kelliger, fullback. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Ten thirty remaining in the half. Eaglin in the shotgun. Hand off to Hampton on the left side. He's got room. Spins into the end zone. Touchdown, Hampton. What a great run by Hampton there. Burgard line pushing the East Aurora guys back and get it to their workhorse. Hampton's got the kid, great runner. He runs hard. Downhill the whole time. It's tough to bring down. See what Burgard does here for conversion attempt. Kind of a weird formation what they're doing. Yeah, almost like the old swinging gate formation. Right. Centers by himself. As you can see on your video. They call a timeout. They're a little confused there. Big two-point conversion, though, Tony. I mean, 14-12, you know, chance to tie it up. It's a big play here. So nice to see fans in the crowd in, uh, in the stands now. It's real football again, right? Cheers yeah. Cheers here, stomping on the, you know, fan, fans on the uh, on the bleachers, banging the bleachers. That's, you know, that's what it's supposed to be. This is what high school football is. Exactly. Host of games going around Western New York tonight. We mentioned earlier Medina had an 8 to nothing lead on time in. If we get any scores, we will pass them along to you as the broadcast goes along. Yeah, big, big, big game in Jamestown today, Tony. Orchard Park and Jamestown playing there tonight. Oh, renewing that rivalry. Yeah. Of course, uh, Jamestown is now an A school. They're not double A. Right. Orchard Park still double A. But the battles that those two schools have had over the years. You think Jamestown Orchard Park, you think Tundo versus uh, Wally Huckno. <laughs> Legendary matchups. It's a more of a traditional, back to a traditional stance here for, for Burgard. Eaglin in the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, rolls out, throws. Touchdown or point after is good. Just inside, uh, just over the goal line. 
We'll take a break. When we come back, more action. WNY Athletics presents high school football. See you do car? Forget about it. How about home? Forget about it. Does he get good rates? Forget about it. And you're saying there's no problem too big for this guy? Forget about it. This is Johnny, the guy we've been talking about. Johnny, this is Paul Wolf. Mr. Wolf, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for the invite. Not a problem. It's Paul, not Mr. Wolf. Oh, sorry, Paul. Johnny, forget about it. For all your insurance needs, call 835 Wolf. And. at 14. Great back and forth game here, Tone. Short kickoff and Ooh. brought down. That's definitely going to draw a flag. That'll be a late hit. I think that was Hampton actually on the hit. What was that number six? Might have been uh, Rival Marks. Yeah, un un unnecessary there. The, the play was already blown dead basically. So it should be 15 yards, I believe, Corey Storrow giving him good field position. You got to be disciplined as a player. You can't, uh, yep. you can't let it fly like that. And I'm sure the coaching staff will let him have it too on the sidelines. 14-14 yep. game. You can't give up a free 15 yards. So we'll see where they spot the ball. Officials going to mark it off there. now. Should be right around midfield, I believe. Oh. 45. Great field position for East Aurora to start this drive. We'll see what Fryer and company do here. Under center. Handoff. Up the middle. It was a loose ball, but he was down. Trying to get the number. That was number nine on the carry. Ethan, I'm sorry, Lux Fiegel. East Aurora throwing a, a, a bunch of different formations at them. Look at the hood player there. Burgard player down. Trainers coming out onto the field. East Aurora players taking a knee. Ten minutes left in the quarter. We'll take a break. We'll be back. WNY Athletics presents High School Football. Are you in pain from a no-fault car accident? Don't wait. Call RES Physical Medicine and Rehab today and take advantage of our 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. One of our medical professionals will see you within 48 hours. RES offers DXD imaging for a more accurate diagnosis in less time. This allows our doctors to coordinate the most effective treatment plan to get you on your way to recovery faster. Feel better with RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. Click or call today to learn more. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to HowardHanna.com. Rank the number one real estate site for sellers. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. Get started today at HowardHanna.com. Call 835-WOLF. Remember, you call on the wolf, that's all you had to say. Call today. When you're ready to buy a home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. You can find new listings before they appear anywhere else. 
and refine your search for immediate notifications of similar properties. Plus, get pre-qualified to make your offer stronger and connect with a local Howard Hanna agent who knows your area and how to close the deal. So when you're ready to buy, visit howardhanna.com. Tony Kelly, Jerry, and Tim Tifa, we are live here at All High Stadium. WNY Athletics presents High School Football. Ten minutes remaining in the half. We are tied at 14. Burgard uh, had an injury. Hopefully he'll be okay. I imagine injuries are going to be a key issue. It's just so difficult in getting them back into uh, right. getting the bodies back to used to playing, even running. Screen. Back to pass, screen play to Clothier. Cuts it inside, the 30, breaks a tackle, brought down inside the 10 yard line. Great play there. We thought they might go back to that because that's what they, they scored on the touchdown, but it got called back. Went right back to it with almost the same exact success that they had the first time. How do you not consistently feed him the ball? Yeah, he is, he is, he is their go-to guy, and they're going to get in the ball as much as possible, and it's paying off. He's an exciting runner. Uh, you get a chance to watch East Aurora play, you got to check this young man out. They're spotting it at the 10 yard line. First and 10 for East Aurora. Rolling out out of the shotgun to the left side. Brought down close to the five, it looks like. The flag on the play on the, on the far left side, Tony. Referees are talking it over. No flag. He's waving it off. I think he just wanted to say hello. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Probably he, wanted to get on TV. He missed <laughs> us. <laughs> Kenny Harris picking up the flag, saying no penalty. He used to wear a, quite a few times to send that guy in motion and, and fake the handoff to them. Watch one of these players. They're going to give it to him and see if Burgard bites or not on it. I'm sure what they're looking at, they're trying to get the safety to move. If they can get the safety to move and vacate an area, that's where they're right. going to go and try to exploit. Second down for the Blue Devils. Fryer under center. Hand off to Clothier up the middle. No signal yet. Looks like he's short. Short of a touchdown. So that's going to bring up a third down and inches. Gee, I wonder who's going to get the ball here. Yeah. Or the quarterback's going to keep it and go right up the gut. A different quarterback in that tone. Quarterback keeper up the middle. Touchdown, East Aurora. Delayed signal by the officials, but they give East Aurora the TD. Yeah, it looks like they put Lux Figo in there as a quarterback at that particular play. A bigger kid, I guess. You know, the plan was just having them both, both forward there. It worked out well. I think Fiegel's 180, and... He's 6'3", though, too, so he yeah. can reach over. Fires one. It's only a 10-pound difference. Clothier in to uh, try the point after kick. Waiting for the snap. The put down, the kick is up. And it's good. East Aurora 21, Burgard 14. Burgard basically, they got to figure out how to stop Clothier. Clothier. If you can stop him, you've got a shot at this game. Yeah. If absolutely. not, it's going to be a long evening. Right. Right. He's their workhorse. They, you know, they're getting them, getting him the ball in the backfield. They're getting it on screens. You know, it's very, very clear what East Aurora wants to do. 
They're not, they're not hiding it. It's, you know, beat us at what we're going to do, right? Beautiful night for football here at All High Stadium in North Buffalo. Behind formerly Bennett High School. It will always be Bennett High School to me. Tone quick out of, out of town score or other school score. Um, the big one in Jamestown. Orchard Park up 13 to 12 on Jamestown in the second quarter. Ooh. East Aurora will kick it off to Burgard. Deep kick sends him back to the 10. Bringing it up the middle. And brought down at about the 27 yard line of Burgard where the Bulldogs will take over. First and 10, Burgard. Good back and forth game, Tone. And, you know, really no team's been able to stop the other team yet. We had the, the one stop on the first drive for Burgard and then interception uh, that East Aurora threw. But other than that, it's been back and forth, touchdown after touchdown. Certainly the running game's uh, clicking for both teams. I think it's huge. I know they both like to throw a little bit more, but it seems like the run is there for them. And both have very talented running backs, too. So. Eaglin will be in the shotgun, one back in the backfield. And we've got a timeout by Burgard. Something they saw they didn't like. I don't know if it was personnel or... Didn't like the play they called, wanted to bring it back and try something else or something that they said, wait a minute, let's try this. Yeah, that, you know, shows every drive is crucial and, you know, they, they're they not going to waste any plays. So got to get it right and go from there. Yeah, sometimes as a coach, it's something you see, defense comes out and all right, safety's in one position or maybe the linebackers are looking like, you know, maybe there's a tell, there's a giveaway. Look, they're going to blitz over the middle. We, let's get our tight end or let's get somebody with a, uh, you know, a crossing pattern over the middle. Yeah. Also with these two teams, though, as you got most of the kids are playing both ways. You know, they, not a lot of kids on either, on either team. So, you know, at least nine of the kids are playing both ways. So sometimes there's some confusion right after you know right after the kickoff if the sure. person's in and out so and again first game first game you know errors too that they're gonna they're gonna run through so first and ten ball spotted on the 29 yard line of Burgard 827 remaining in the opening half East Aurora 21 Burgard 14 two backs in the backfield Eaglin and the shotgun, snap, rolling out to his right, tosses it, incomplete. Looked like it was intended for Washington, I believe. Yeah, it was intended the for, the, for the big man, yeah. Burger really struggling with the short pass. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, they have about three or four drop passes, and uh, again, I'm a little surprised they're not just, you know, giving it to Hampton, you know, un until it doesn't work. You know, he's, he's running up and down the field so far. You know, make East Aurora stop that. You know, get, get the big guy out there blocking for him and you know, get the yardage that way. But Shotgun, handoff, Hampton, breaks it, tackle, getting to the outside. And he's looks like he's going to be a little bit short of the first down. That'll be close. No, they said he got it. Runs hard. He's got great vision. Yeah, another strong run there by Burgard. And again, I, you know, I keep saying it, but you know, Washington leading the way as a fullback. It's again not a position that's used too much in in today's game. Um, but Burgard's using it with a lot of success tonight. Sam Gash, old time football. Right. 
Handoff to Hampton on the right side. Breaks through the line. And enough for another Burgard first down. Sometimes you just got to keep it simple, Tone. You know, just old school That's football, it. running up and down until they, they, they can stop you, right? You got the big boys on the line. Yep. Let them earn their keep. And, and then that's going to open up some of the passing then, sure. too. Because then what happens is your safety start biting and coming yep. up. Your corners start biting. They're coming up because they want to help out the linebackers. Next thing you know, you're able to uh, free somebody deep. Yep. Ball spotted on the 49-yard line. Shotgun. Low snap, handoff to Hampton, trying to get to the outside. He is met immediately, flags down. Rival Marks actually got the ball there. It was actually Maxwell Fryer with the tackle, the quarterback, as you mentioned, with yep. the players playing both ways. He's flying up from the safety position there. But that the bad snap, that, that throws the timing off there. You know, look, we, keep we keep talking about that. It's little things like that that's, you know, going to make or break a play. The timing's off when the ball gets, you know, on the ground like that. Only a second down for Burgard and about 15 to go. 6.34 remaining in the half. So nice driving up Hurdle Avenue, my old stomping grounds. It's great See, there in the summer, isn't it? It's gotten too busy for me. <laughs> I mean, you got to understand when I grew up, it was nice and calm and relaxed. Now it's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of traffic. Rollout pass incomplete again. They are struggling with the passing game. And it's got it's got to be frustrating. It's you know the it's the same drop every time. They're making their move up field before they catch the ball. You know I understand they want to get going, but you got to do the basics first. Got to haul in the ball first. Get the hands out there, bring it into the body, then turn it up field and run. But what this does now it takes Burgard out of the element of surprise. You, they know they're not going to give it to Hampton right. coming out of the backfield. So they you're going to sit back and you're going to play a little bit deeper. And the defensive line will pin their ears back. Right, you're going to try a longer pass or maybe throw in a screen or something along those lines there. I mean, Eaglin, he's a three-year starter, and uh, he is struggling mightily tonight in the passing game. And it's not it's not him. You know, a lot of it, as you mentioned, uh, Tim, so many drops. Yeah. What's the one-on-one on co one on one coverage right in front of us, number five there? I take a shot there. Oops, hold on. Eaglin's going to keep it himself. Avoids the sack. Breaking a couple of tackles. And got back to the original line of scrimmage. That's the definition of turning nothing into something there, Tone. It was a you know good cutback by the quarterback. Get a few yards in there. Well, I bring up a fourth down and nine for the Bulldogs. Coach has a big decision to make here. Do you punt or do you go for it? So they're lining up the punt at least. You'd like to hope to get your opponent uh, back deep, but at the same time, East Aurora is showing pretty decent uh, special teams ability. The snap. Punt. Not a far punt. Takes a bounce, a Burgard bounce, crosses the 20. Anytime you can get your opponent uh, inside uh, the 20, you're doing all right. Yeah, got a good bounce there. So East Roar will take over, first and 10. They'll spot it about the 18. This is a big test here for, for Burgard. They, you know, besides the interception, they haven't stopped East Roar yet. So with 4.50 to go, you know, in the half, you don't want to go down two touchdowns going into halftime. So this is a big defensive drive here, big defensive stance here for, for Burgard. With, 
Timeout East Aurora, we'll, let, we'll do the same. WNY Athletics presents High School Football. Does he do car? Forget about it. How about home? Forget about it. Does he get good rates? Forget about it. And you're saying there's no problem too big for this guy? Forget about it. Johnny, the guy we've been talking about. Johnny, Paul Wolf. Mr. Wolf, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for the invite. Not a problem. It's Paul, not Mr. Wolf. Oh, sorry, Paul. Johnny, forget about it. For all your insurance needs, call 835 Wolf. And. When you're ready to buy a home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. You can find new listings before they appear anywhere else and refine your search for immediate notifications of similar properties. Plus, get pre-qualified to make your offer stronger and connect with a local Howard Hanna agent who knows your area and how to close the deal. So when you're ready to buy, visit howardhanna.com and find your home fast. We're back live. East Aurora with the ball. First down. Hand off to the left side. Not much there. Maybe two or three yards on the carry. Let's see how, how aggressive East Aurora chooses to be on this drive because I think the one thing you want is you want this to be the last drive either way. So, you, you know, either you score and you end it or you don't score and you end it. You don't want to give Burgard uh, the ball back in, in this half. The other thing, too, you know, you think about Burgard's defense. If you're calling, if I'm calling this defense, I'm a little worried. I mean, I want to call a blitz, but we got burned for a long touchdown earlier. Yeah. Back to pass. Fire. Rolling out to his right. Throws. Just incomplete. Pass intended there for Cam Dominowski. Looks like a good toss there, Tony. Look, from our end, look, look like there's a catcher ball there. Just Good a point. little bit too long. So sec uh, third down and seven for the Blue Devils. 403 remaining in the half. East Aurora 21, Burgard 14. That's where we're at. East Roar showing four receivers set. End in motion to the left. Pressure coming. It's going to be a screen to Clothier. And he is brought down for a loss by Washington. Great, great defensive play by the big man there. Um, well, Clothier is limping there, buddy. Yeah, I noticed that. Favoring his right ankle. Yeah. But uh, yeah, great, great defensive play there by Washington. Um, bring up a big fourth down there. So looks like should be the first hold for Burgard. I would assume they're punting here. Um, great job that Burgard and gives them a chance to, to go in the halftime, you know, a chance to tie it up. Yeah, outside of the interception, this is their first legit yeah. stop. Couldn't have come at a better time, too. So. Snap. Kick. Nice punt, caught at the 49, brought up the middle. Hampton, it looks like, broke a couple of tackles, got over the 40, probably about the 36, 37 yard line. Burgard possession, first down and 10. So big three minutes here for Burgard, got great field position with a chance to tie it before the half. And I think they get the ball at, at, at to start the third uh, quarter also. So good Correct. drive here. I mean, ideally, if you're Burgard, you'd like to get keep your ground game going and grind it out into the end zone just as time expires right. to end the half. Right. 
Shotgun for Eaglin. Snap. Hand off to Hampton on the right side. About two yards on the gain. It'll be an interesting call for Burgard. Third. Second down and eight. Yeah, Burgard in no hurry here. They're you know taking their time. They, like you said, they they definitely want to. They don't want to give the ball back to East Aurora either way. So they're gonna you know make a break here. Uh, but they're going to have the ball last. You'd like to go into the uh, into the half at le uh, with a tie. Right. And then you got a whole new ball game. One half to play. Another timeout. So Coach Cobb is going to want to talk it over with his offense. The thing that that they're kind of handicapped, like, look, we, you know, we just can't pass the ball. We can't throw it. We're trying to throw short and complete. Nobody's catching it. We try to go deep. Nobody's catching it. Yeah, yeah. They, like we, I think it was four drop passes. Um, Easily. Yeah, that, and probably all four would have would have went for at least another five to, to ten yards. So, um, but it, it's back to the basics. You know, they're cutting it upfield before they actually have control of the ball. You know, got to calm down. And, you know, make some plays for your quarterback. But at some point, you got to get some confidence in your receivers and yep. an eagle in your quarterback. Absolutely, yep. I can't imagine having so much any confidence when you're coaching, like wanting to go to that. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> like, do I? Uh, I don't know. I think that's Burgard's last time out also, so let's see if that comes into play at all. Some confusion on the line in the last play. That could that could hurt them if you get close to the right. goal line yep. as uh, clock is ticking down. Shotgun. Snap. Hand off. Hampton up the middle. Gets it to about the 30. So, so now you're at a point where, you, yes, take your time, but you, you want to go a little bit quicker now. You're under two minutes now without a timeout. You have two plays here to get two yards, but then you're going to be under a minute, maybe minute 10 at that point. So you, you got to get going a little bit here. Good point. But on the flip side, if you're East Aurora, you're putting a monster back. You're putting a spy on Hampton. Yep. Wherever he goes, you go. Yep. Handoff, Hampton with the spin move. May have enough. We'll see where they mark him, Tim. Yeah, great individual effort there. Make you know spin move, breaking the tackle that would have been in the backfield. That I believe just short there. So big fourth down here. And fourth and one for the Bulldogs. One minute remaining in the half. If I'm Burgard, I'm lining up under center and just going forward here. You need about a half a yard. But got to get going a little bit. It's 40 you, seconds you, You're going to run out of time to get to not only get the playoff, but get the uh, to get any points right. before the half. I might throw to the end zone right here. Quarterback keeper up the middle. You got, you He's got the first down. That'll stop the clock. You got to get up, get up to the line of scrimmage. Probably could spike it as soon as the ball is placed. Burgard right to the line of scrimmage. Eaglin under center. And he spikes it. Clock didn't stop. Should be about 21 seconds. We'll see if they ask to put time back on the clock. Of course, the officials keep official time on the field. So it's first and ten for Burgard. I, I Even though the chain crew is showing, no, it's second down. I'm sorry because he spiked the ball. I think you got to try to throw here, Tone. Right? You have you, to. You can't run the ball. You won't get it back on time to be able to spike it. And if you do, it'd be fourth down. So, I, 
you know, maybe try a play action just to get the safety maybe to bite and try to dump it over his head. But you, you got to be thinking they have to throw here. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, two backs in the backfield. Shotgun formation. Snap, back to pass. Throws it down the right side. Incomplete, but we've got a flag. There was contact near the goal line. But in high school, it's not yeah. from the spot it's of the foul. Not, it's only 15 yards. Not as big of a, of a penalty <coughs> as you see every Sunday. It would be on the one-yard line. Um, actually, the defensively, if you're beat, you might as well do that right. in high school. The yeah, pass was overthrown, but there was contact. The officials threw the flag. So we'll see where they spot it. And, and again, it, it's, it's huge not having a timeout right now because you're, you're, you're limited to what you can do. If you keep it on the ground, it's going to be the last play. Right. Try a jump ball to five here as an athlete. You can go up and get it. East two are playing deep. There it is. Oh, went the other way. Going back to the right side. Incomplete. So Berger, it looks like they're going to be contenders. Throw, uh, keep throwing to the end zone, and hopefully somebody comes down with it. And East Aurora, they're just sitting back. They said, come on, bring it. We're going to knock it down. It's, it's another disadvantage not having a kicker at this point, too. True. You know, make it 21-17 and getting the ball back in the third quarter. Wouldn't be that bad of a position, position to be in. I assume because they went for two on both their touchdowns, they probably don't have a, a, a kicker that's... Traditionally, you know. city teams don't. Ball's on the 12-yard line. One back in the backfield, Eaglin. Fakes the handoff, rolling, throws. And this was caught, but he got out of bounds with 2.9 seconds left. Huh. Well, they were looking for that completion to get yeah. that confidence going, so maybe uh, that sparks them. East Aurora is more than happy to give them anything underneath. Should be the, it's going to be the last play. So, you know, it's almost like drawing up your two point conversion play here. You know, what's your best play? And see if you can get 11 yards here, 10 yards here. Burgard going two receivers to the left, one to the right, one back in the backfield. Back to pass. Everybody rolling out to the right. Now Eaglin scrambling to his left, trying to direct traffic. Puts it up into the end zone. Intercepted. Intercepted. <laughs> Looked like Cam uh, Dominowski with the uh, interception and lost his helmet on the play. Big defensive stands at Defensive snap there by East Aurora. That's uh, giving them some confidence going into the halftime with the lead and big, big play there on the defensive end. All right, well, we'll take a break for the half. It's 21, East Aurora 14 for Burgard. WNY Athletics presents high school football. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. Are you in pain from a no-fault car accident? Don't wait. 
Call RES Physical Medicine and Rehab today and take advantage of our 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. One of our medical professionals will see you within 48 hours. RES offers DXD imaging for a more accurate diagnosis in less time. This allows our doctors to coordinate the most effective treatment plan to get you on your way to recovery faster. Feel better with RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. Click or call today to learn more. Paul Wolf Agency, how can I help? I got a problem. I got a big problem. The house flooded overnight, everything's destroyed, and I don't know what to do. You can relax. The wolf is on his way. What's the damage? It's bad. As opposed to good? It's 20 minutes away. I'll be there in 10. You're Teddy? Yes, sir. I'm Paul Wolf. I solve problems. Oh, good. Because I got a big one in here. May I come in? <laughs> Absolutely. Mr. Wolf, can I get you a cup of coffee? Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G Fitness. Your goal is our goal. Media is a locally owned and operated multi-purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, Buttes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. Why do you? At Cairo First Wellness, your health and well-being is our passion. Let us take care of you and your family like one of our own. Cairo First Wellness Center is dedicated to providing patients long-term relief and teaching them how to continue taking care of themselves. With a blend of different techniques, services, and personalized treatment plans, we'll help you find wellness in a way that's right for you. Between chiropractic care, spinal decompression, nutritional counseling, massage therapy, custom orthotics, and more, your relief is in our hands. If twisting, popping, and cracking intimidate you, our Pro Adjuster restores the same range of motion as a physical adjustment would with gentle, repeated tapping. Dr. Mo at Cairo First has been taking care of my back needs for the past four years. His staff treats me like family. I've had the traction, I've had the massage done, and every time, leave here feeling fresh and brand new. Cairo First Wellness Center. Your health and well-being. Our passion. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. WNYAthletics.com is the premier high school sports website in western New York. Providing the best sports coverage of Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Leagues. Check out our page for daily game recaps and late-breaking sports news. Our online scoreboards are updated in real time. Never miss a goal or touchdown. Visit WNYAthletics.com today or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube.
Burgard had all kinds of problems that night. So we're going to get back here to the second half action. Tony Caligiuri and Tim Chifa take over from here. I am signing out. Talk to you guys after the game. Peace. Getting ready to start the third quarter. 21 to 14, East Aurora on top of Burgard. Burgard set to receive. Clothier to do the kicking for the Blue Devils. Yes, Tony, as Frank was saying, uh, you know, a big defensive stance there by, by East Aurora. They had, you know, uh, Burgard had the ball, I think on the, about the five yard line for about three plays and just couldn't punch it in. Let's see if they can get back there here now. Deep kickoff goes through the hands of the return man, picks it up at the two, bring it up field, and he is going to be dropped right around the 10 yard line. Not exactly ideal field position for the Bulldogs. And, and we, we kind of keep saying this, Tony, it's, it's little things like that that are, that are, you know, they're shooting themselves in the foot. It's a, a drop kickoff, a drop, uh, you know, a, a drop snap, and obviously the drop passes, um, about five drop passes, you know, not really, the receiver's not really giving their quarterback some help uh, to get that game going. Um, th they're going to have to do do something with the passing game because you can't give it to Hampton every single play. Otherwise, East Aurora is going to move about nine guys up in the box and, you know, and just stop them that way. So first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Ball spotted on the 11-yard line. Tough to drive 90 yards. It's re it really is at any level. East Aurora defense has to be licking their chops. We'll see what happens here. Shotgun handoff up the middle. Just bulls his way forward for about 12 yards. That's maybe even 14. That's how you move the chains. Yep, that, that's, a, that's a good way to give yourself some space there, Tony. Give it to the big man. And good luck bringing him down. I wouldn't want to get in his way. <laughs> that was Washington on the carry, if I'm not mistaken. It was, yeah. He's a big boy. Yeah, Doug Washington, the six foot, 220 pound junior fullback. He is a load, Tony. He is tough. He seems bigger than 220. Yeah. I have a few kids on my youth team that are at least 220. Actually, I have one that's 300. Hand off to Hampton on the right side. He's got room, gets to the outside, and he'll be just short of the 35. Hampton running strong for Burgard. That'll bring up a second down and short. Another nice first down run by Hampton, leading the way by Washington. Nine yards on the first first down. That's a great, great first down there. Second one, you have some options now. Shotgun. Snap, handoff to Washington again, up the middle. Dragging players with him, but there is a flag on the far side. The, the, the safeties for East Aurora Tone are, are almost right next to the linebackers, basically daring Burgard to throw. Uh, you know, they're moving everybody up. It looks like we have a face mask here on East Aurora. Should be 15 more yards there for Burgard. Well, as you mentioned, he's such a big guy. So hard to bring down. Speaking of Washington, the fullback, yeah. you can see how a hand could get in there and grab a mask. <laughs> as he's running you over, he's grabbing everything, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Shotgun, hand off to Hampton, up the middle, brought down after a short gain. Showed that he wanted to go outside, but cut it back inside. And East Aurora stayed disciplined, staying in their lane, staying home. And had the running back run right into him there. Because he's had a lot of success running between the tackles. Again, I, I think there was an adjustment at, at halftime with East Aurora. Their, their safeties are literally like a step behind the linebackers, basically just daring the East Aurora or Burgard to throw. 
The snap, hand off to Washington again up the middle. Not much of a gain. He just ran over number 75 there, Jack Brown. It was a loose ball, but I think the play was dead before it, it popped out. Like a Marshawn Lynch out there just running guys over. This is about a third down and four for Burgard. And I got a, <laughs> a pillar of you. right in the way. <laughs> Not, not exactly ideal uh, situation here. All right, here we go. Again in the shotgun, waiting for the snap. Hand off to Hampton. He goes up the middle, short gain. So Tim, that's gonna bring up a fourth and about three. Yeah, I, I, would, I would be shocked if they, if they punted. But you, you don't have a lot of options with, with you know the passing game struggling that much. What about a yard and a half there? It looks like Tone. It's and their offense is on the field. It looks like. Eaglin in his shotgun, waiting for the snap. Hand off to Hampton on the right side. And he may have enough for the first down. East Roar did a good job of bottling him up, but somehow he was able to squirt forward. They call it should be enough for a first. Ball spotted on the 35. Got a measure tone? Well, the chain mark is not even... It's about a yard short of the 30, but about the 36. They're moving it back. Now they're bringing it back. I didn't see a flag. Well, there must have been. They're marking oh. it off. Oh, it must have been a holding. Now maybe you bring out the punting team. Yeah, I think you're forced to now, Tom. A big hold there because it looked like he probably had the first down. No, their offense still on the field, Tony. He got a fourth down and 14 play. Back to pass, Eaglin. He's got time, chucks it up the left oh, side. Oh, that was a big time hold. Oh. Where's the flags? Oh, they definitely got away with one there, Tony. Are you serious? He grabbed his arm. Are you serious? The receiver oh, was boy. completely held. His arm was held back, and they didn't call it? Oh, that, Whoa. That, that, was, that was a tough one to miss there. That's a big swing that, you know, it's a turnover on downs now. It would have been a first down. Wow. <laughs> if the officials take a look at that, they're going to hate themselves. Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> the fans are, you can hear, are not Great. happy in the background. I just hope uh, the, the language back. is under control. <laughs> He's not wrong, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> First down and 10 for East Aurora on the 50. Handoff and maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. That would have been James Tresmond with the carry for the Blue Devils. Tony, you mentioned uh, in the second quarter, you know, East Aurora maybe having someone shadow uh, Hampton. Maybe do the same thing if you're Burgard. Um, have someone shadow uh, Clothier. You know, he's their workhorse. And it seems like if you can slow him down, that is the, the key to stopping their offense. Absolutely. Second down and 10. Three receiver formation, one back in the back. Four receiver formation, one in the backfield. Shotgun. End in motion to the left. Fakes the handoff. Fryer's going to keep it himself. And he is going to go down for a loss. Looks like Hampton on the stop there. 
came up from his linebacker position and stopped Fryer for a loss. A third down and long, ball spotted on the East Aurora 45. They have to get to the Burgard 40. If I'm the Burgard coaches, I'm screaming out, watch the screen here. I mean, it's been, they've ran it twice, and it was two huge big plays, although one was a, was a penalty. And don't forget, East Aurora has also shown the ability to throw deep. Yep. Yeah, they scored their second touchdown that way. Fryer back to pass. Under rush. Looked like they wanted to go right. screen. Good play by Burgard. Sniffed it off, forced him out of bounds. Just shy of the 50. We'll see where they mark it. Good discipline there by Burgard. Not biting on the screen. It looked like they tried to set that up there again. And it was a great defensive stance, not falling for it that time. It looked like the defensive front was so quick getting up field that Fryer really had no chance right. to set it up, set his feet and throw it. So fourth down and 14. It's a punting situation for the Blue Devils. Clothier with the punt. Booming punt. That's going to take a Burgard bounce. East Aurora will down it at about the 34-yard line with 532 remaining in the third quarter. East Aurora 21, Burgard 14. So tell me when from the first half of an offensive shootout, nobody stopping each other, to back-to-back -back holds for the defense here in the third quarter and two punts. Good point. You know, I, I think if you're Burgard, you know, sooner or later, you, 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 with, with the safeties moving up that far, you, you got to try a play action. I know you've been dropping the ball, but it, you got to keep trying it at some point. You know, they're, they're, they're trying to bite on Hampton because they're giving the ball so often. One of these times, you're going to have to try to fake it and go over the safeties' heads. Handoff to Washington up the middle, plows forward to about the 40. And we think we have an injury. Oh, I hate to see this. East Aurora players grabbing his knee. Oh, it's Clothier. It's the same way that he, he tweaked uh, in the second quarter also. He was visibly in pain, holding his knee. I hope he's okay. Comes off the field, takes off his helmet. Drops down to the ground. The trainers are going to take a look at him. They're checking the stability in his knee. Oh, what a scary situation. Hey, Second okay. down and four for the Bulldogs. Hand off to Hampton on the right side, cuts it inside. Breaks a couple of tackles, should have enough for a first down. Now we have a scrum. At about the 46, the play's blown dead. First and 10, Burgard. Good kick out block there by uh, Brash and McNeil, number four, was, gave the lane uh, for, for Hampton to be able to cut up and gain the first down. Quick out of town, uh, other uh, game update, Tone. It's 20 to 18, Orchard Park at the half. Hmm. Shotgun, may have movement. I think uh, number five for Burgard jumped. Yeah. And number five and maybe three other guys too. Zaire Hayes, a little quick on the snap. Well, one thing different, Tim, in, in the second half, at least if you're looking at Burgard's offense, is the emergence of Washington carrying it as a f out of the fullback. Uh, position. Yeah, I think he's had all of his carries, I believe, in this half. I don't know if he had a carry in the first half. I don't half. think he did. Um, but they definitely may have found something they like because he's, he's, he's 
he's eating up yards every time he gets the ball. First down and 15. Eaglin stepping back into the shotgun. There it is. Fakes the handoff, throwing the screen. This time he catches it on the left side. Brought back maybe just shy of the original line of scrimmage. About a four yard gain. And not, not a huge yardage gain there, Tony, but it's keeping him honest, you know, and you know, at least I got a completed pass, maybe get a little bit of confidence, because like we said, you're gonna have to go to the, 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 the passing game at some point uh, to, to win this game. Well, we talked about the first half and how, how terrible Burgard was at trying to execute screens and short swing passes and things like that. Yeah. I think they've hit on their last two. Maybe that give them some confidence, who knows? Second down and 11. He jumped again. Yep. And it again, it is uh, Hayes. That almost looked like the, the center hesitated there, which is gonna make the receivers jump off sides there because there was like two guys that jumped. But again, little things, Tone. It's, it's little things like that. It's gonna drive the coaches crazy. The little things like that shoot you in the foot. It makes it really, really stink for video day. The next time. <laughs> <laughs> like, do we have to coach? Oh, oh yes, we do. And you know he's going to point it out every time. <laughs> Grab your popcorn, kids. We're going to watch a little film. 2.45 remaining in the quarter, 21 to 14. East Aurora on top of Burgard, second down and 16. Back to pass, heavy rush. Avoids the rush, he's gonna keep it himself. Eaglin, maybe about the 46. Yeah, nice step up there by Eaglin, you know, getting him into a, a, a manageable third down here. Uh, good job stepping up in the pocket, taking what the defense is giving him there. Looks like, uh, uh, Clothier is back out there. I was points. just going to say that. I was looking on the sidelines. I didn't see him. So I was like, okay, he must be back in. You know, we, we've kind of mentioned, you know, four or five times about, you know, the mistakes and, and draw passes. But that being said, it's a one-score game still. Sure. You know what I mean? So Competitive game. Absolutely. They're, they're, they're definitely still in this game. And, you know, just try to ride the wave here. Eaglin hand off to Hampton on the left side. Hampton Got it. breaking tackles, getting to the outside. He should have enough for a Burgard first down, showing that explosiveness. As soon as he got to the outside, he was able to turn it up. Big third down there to keep the drive going there too. Aurora defense been out on the field almost the whole quarter. It's, you know, they have been out there a while. And as you said, Tim, the, you know most of these guys play uh, both, both sides of the ball. Yep. Hand off to Washington. Yep. Rumbles and he fumbles. Looks like Burgard recovered. They called him down. Again. If you would have noticed how he was carrying the ball as he went through the, the line of scrimmage, kind of out there, yep. the kind of the run that the quarterback <laughs> is going to say, we need to talk. You can't carry it like that. It's not a loaf of bread. <laughs> Frank says, you got to bring up food right now. But what did I say to Tim at halftime? I'm already <laughs> thinking food as we were walking through the hallway. See the East Aurora defense. A lot of guys with their hands on their hip right now, Tony. If I'm Burkhardt, I want Washington running right down their throats when they're tired. Exactly. One back in the backfield. Reverse. Hand off to end a reverse. Oh, a hurdle! Oh, and brought down. But we do have a flag. 
Kevin Walker with the hurdle, just jumping over a defender. It looks like it's going to go against Burgard. I assume it's a hold or. Yep. Yeah. Good athletic move there. You know, trying to make a play there, jumping over. <laughs> Usually doesn't work too often, but unless you're Josh Allen against Minnesota, right? But. Got a hold there, but you know it's. You, you see what Burgard's doing. They're you know they're trying to get their athletes the ball in space and you know letting them make a play. Sure. Well, that's the difference between the first half and the second half. Is the first half they really struggled to get it outside of Hampton. They had nothing going. Right. This half, at least they're able to mix in Washington and a little bit of the screen. All right, that's going to end the third quarter. East Aurora hanging on to a 21-14 lead. We'll take a break. We'll be back. WNY Athletics presents High School Football. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to HowardHanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit HowardHanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. I love being home. Are you in pain from a no-fault car accident? Don't wait. Call RES Physical Medicine and Rehab today and take advantage of our 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. One of our medical professionals will see you within 48 hours. RES offers DXD imaging for a more accurate diagnosis in less time. This allows our doctors to coordinate the most effective treatment plan to get you on your way to recovery faster. Feel better with RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. Click or call today to learn more. Paul Wolf Agency, how can I help? I got a problem. I got a big problem. The house flooded overnight, everything's destroyed, and I don't know what to do. You can relax. The wolf is on his way. What's the damage? It's bad. As opposed to good? It's 20 minutes away. I'll be there in 10. You're Teddy? Yes, sir. I'm Paul Wolf. I solve problems. Oh, good, because I got a big one in here. May I come in? <laughs> Absolutely. Mr. Wolf, can I get you a cup of coffee? Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To do Deep, couldn't find anybody open, kept it himself and brought it across the 40 yard line. It'll give Burgard a third down and six, I believe. Good, good individual play there by the quarterback. Getting into a manageable down because you're probably gonna go two down territory here. So you made it somewhat manageable to try and get the first down here. And Eaglin could give you another dimension if uh, you know, you're sending your receivers deep and he has the ability yeah. to just scramble and run. Yeah, that he, could be trouble. Yeah, he definitely has the ability to make guys miss and make some plays on his own. Another injury there for the East Aurora. And East Aurora is so disciplined on defense. They do such a great job knowing their assignments, where they're supposed to be. But as you pointed out, they're also getting gassed being out there so long. Number 75 coming off the, off the field, nursing a sore shoulder. Yeah, Jack Brown. Third down and five for Burgard. Ball's on the 37 yard line of East Aurora. Third down, two downs to get five yards. I don't think I'd try anything fancy here. I, I, I give it to, uh, to, to Washington or obviously to Hampton. Washington lead block, Hampton going through the left side. The scrum's kind of plowing forward. I think he has enough for a first down. It looked like he got it to the 30. First down. Another first down for Burgard. 
time-consuming drive. The ball is spotted on the 30. So this has this has the making of whoever has the ball last touch again, you know, the way it's going. Hand off to Hampton on the right side. Breaks a tackle. Forced out of bounds. Close to the 25. Another hard run by Hampton. He's, he, you know, he, he's not an easy kid to bring down. He, he's quick, he's fast, he runs hard. And we have some tired East Aurora players trying to tackle a very good running back right now. Tony, Tim, just a couple of out-of-town scores. West Seneca West leading South Park 40-20. to They're in the fourth quarter, and Jamestown still trails OP 24-20. They just started the fourth quarter there in uh, Jamestown. Thank you much, Mr. Frank Wolf. I think actually Jamestown's up 24-20 on OP. Tim, you are correct. Hand off to the fullback, Washington. It being gang tackled by the East Aurora defense, he will. I mean, not for a couple. You gotta like what Burghardt's doing right now. They're just lining up, saying, "We're gonna run it down your throat and try and stop us." You Smash know, mouth football. Yep. Second down and short for the Bulldogs. Or they're giving him the first down, okay. First and 10, Burgard. Ball's on the 20. Eaglin in the shotgun. Hand off to Hampton, up the middle. And he gets it close to the 10. Be a second down and short for Burgard. You can tell him we're kind of in another situation, you know, if, if Burgard was to, to punch it in here, again, not having the kicking game, how big is that two point conversion gonna be? It's either gonna be to take the lead or stay down one. Yeah, a lot of the city teams, uh, you know, would they live and die by the two point conversion. Hand off to Hampton, bounces it to the right side. Crosses the 10 to about the six. We're, we're about in that territory where they, where they were at the end of the first half where they struggled to, to punch it in and weren't able to. Uh, let's see if they you know, learned from that a little bit and able to change it up a little bit and punch it in. Although they were kind of forced to pass because they didn't have the, the timeouts. Looks like they're taking one now. Or actually, East Aurora's taking one. So East Aurora defense, one thing, you talk it over what your assignments, what you're going to be doing, but the other thing is, is you give your guys a little bit of air. Yeah, absolutely. Get them some water. Let them refresh themselves a little bit. Because as we said, this has been a long, uh, tough drive. Yeah. You mentioned how the defenders are sitting there and standing there with their hands on right. their hips. Yeah. Over to play, scoring, scoring. This is like an old school defensive battle, run down your throat. Who's going to stop who? Um, let's see if East Aurora can, you know, put their hand on the ground here and, and, you know, get a stop there. Reminds me of old time Harvard Cup football, actually. Right. <laughs> Beautiful night here, too, isn't it, Tony? You can't oh, it's gorgeous. Loving this. <laughs> First down and eight. 8.37 remaining in the fourth. Eaglin, shotgun, hands off to Washington, cuts it to the left side. 
Burgard's saying touchdown. We're waiting for the officials. They haven't seen any indication. One yard line, maybe. I'm Burgard, I'm lining right up under center and just going. Just go right under center and move pull forward. And Eaglin's strong. He's big and strong. Yeah, he could carry it up the middle. It's right over. It's very rarely stopped, especially in high school. Sure. He's in, he's in the shotgun, though. I've Hand off to Washington up the middle. I don't think he got any. There nope, he, he did. Touchdown, Burgard. Very Washington up the middle. Really, really impressive drive. The, you know, you got to give some credit to the, to the Burgard offensive line. Sure. You know, they're pushing them back the entire time. We talked about the size advantage that they do have on East Aurora. And they definitely took advantage of that basically the whole second half. And this is the, t the, the time in the game where big offensive line yeah, ha has shows yep. the wear and tear on the defensive line. Right. They're tired. They can't move as fast. And you got to give them more credit because you know they're going to run the ball. They're having so much trouble throwing. Right. So it's Eaglin in the shotgun. Handoff. Hampton up the middle. Touchdown. Yeah. Or extra yeah, point is huge. good. Take the lead. Big two-point conversion there, so I'm giving them the lead. Huge, 22 to 21, 7.52 remaining in the game. But don't count East Aurora out. This team has got talent. They they have, uh, you know, the will, and you know they're going to come back with number 23 with a heavy dose. But you, you see the, you know, the, the momentum switch just from watching the teams right now. You know, Burgard in the first half, they're kind of down and out, you know, getting run all over the place. And it's a completely different, almost like they just switched right now. You know, the, the East Aurora coach has to notice that, get their guys back back on track, get them rejuvenated, and go have a, a big drive right here. Seven minutes, got to get a score here. East Aurora players talking up by the sideline what they're going to do when they get out there. The other thing, too, that's impressive, Tim, if you think about it, that Burgard drive, they did that with so many penalties against them, whether they were offsides, right, right, holding. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, it, we weren't doing it on purpose, but it seemed like we were criticizing Burgard quite a bit for a penalty, a drop pass, sure. a fumble. But all along, they were just they were hanging around, hanging around, hanging around. And, and East Aurora wa wasn't really taking advantage of the mistakes that Burgard was making, letting them stay around. And now they found themselves down a point. Big drive here for the junior quarterback, Max Fryer. Let's see what he can uh, get his offense to do here, Tom. And you're going to see a heavy, heavy dose of Clothier, number 23, the workhorse running back for the Blue Devils. Such a talent. Fun to watch. Fire under center, handoff to the two back. Not much there. Number 25, Jane Tresmond with the carry. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, so I, I, East Aurora, they, they must have 15 different setups uh you know they're the wing back they go you know three receivers to the right one to the left they really a lot of different looks that they, they, they've been throwing at the coach said at they would he says you'll see a lot of uh a lot of uh different formations yeah. a lot of different guys touching the ball right firing the shotgun now hand off to clothier and he stopped at the line lunges forward for a yard I'll tell you something, the, the Burgard defense looks rejuvenated. You know, they, they got a little pep in their step now. You know, two big stops there on, on two two runs, which they, they couldn't do to save their lives in the first half. So really, really good adjustments by the coaching staff at Burgard uh, during, during halftime because they look like a diff different team right now. Washington with the tackle for Burgard. He's been a beast this half, offense and defense. Offense and defense, exactly. Third down and seven. Ball spotted on the 45-yard line. 
Fryer in the shotgun. Back to pass. Throws. Incomplete. Pass intended for Lux Fiegel. No good. So that'll bring up a fourth down and seven for the Blue Devils. Got a, got a decision here, Tone. I, I mean, how do you not go for it? You, you'd think. I mean, it doesn't look like they are. It looks like Clothier is getting ready to punt. And that's yeah, he is. Let's put a lot of faith in your defense that they're going to have to stop this running game from Burgard, which they haven't shown they can do in the second half. Fans starting to get worked up. Punt. Great punt. A booming punt. And that's going to be blown dead. About the 17, I believe. 17, 18 yard line, right around there. Clothier can punt. <laughs> can do it all. Kick, punt, catch, run. Sell programs at halftime. <laughs> I think he was cooking hot dogs. Sure. <laughs> he's showing he's pretty tough, too. He's left the game twice with That's a couple right. injuries, and yep. he's back, so he's showing that he could bounce back. Good point. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Ball spotted on the 17-yard line. 6.05 remaining in the fourth. Burgard 22, East Aurora 21. Burgard with its first lead of the game. This is basically what you would call gut check time for East Aurora. You know, I, I don't think it's, I think everybody kind of knows what Burgard's going to do. It's just, can you stop it or not? Eaglin, shotgun. He's going to keep it himself. Breaks a couple of tackles. Enough for a first down. Another great athletic play by the quarterback who looked like he had a little trouble with the snap. It was a little low. He was able to make an athletic play, keeping the ball alive, and then get a first down. So now they've given you three things to think about, Washington, yep. Hampton, and Eaglin. Yep, absolutely. A defense like this is all we need. Yeah. <laughs> Shotgun, three backs in the backfield. Hand off to Hampton. Showed like he was going to go outside. Cut it back inside. Brought down for a short gain. Rory O'Brien in on the tackle for East Aurora. Eagling in the shotgun. Waiting for the snap. Hand off to Hampton up the middle. With a big hole. Big hole indeed. He's Just close short. to another first down. Something about the middle of the field that they're seeing in, uh, with East War they're absolutely exploiting. Yeah. They, they gave him a first down, it looks like, Tom. Big first down there. That keeps the clock moving. Yeah, another first down, you, you, you've got to maybe start thinking about calling some timeouts if you're used to the roar. You're getting in that time frame where it's getting close. Good point. At this point, if I'm used to roar, I'm, I'm moving both my safeties up right to the linebacker position completely. If they happen to want to try to throw it over my head, then I think I'd take that chance at this point. Sure. You can't let them get 10, 9 yards at a time. Hand off to Hampton on the right side. Stacked up. Not much there. Chaz Janish on the tackle for the Blue Devils. Second down and nine for the Bulldogs. They're doing a good job of taking their time, not rushing it, staying calm, get as many seconds off that clock as they possibly can. Big second down here. Okay, yeah, 
Washington and Hampton, the backs. Eaglin, shotgun, handoff to Hampton. Gets up the middle. Two or three yards on the play. Big third down here, Tom. I wish we had a stat of how many, how many Hampton runs the first guy missed on. Like he makes the first guy miss every, almost every single run. It's really impressive. Really, really good runner. Ethan Healy on the tackle for East Aurora. Third down and five for the Bulldogs. Bergar essentially going with the same formation with Washington and Hampton. Eaglin in the shotgun, heavy rush. Eaglin's Got throwing it. it. Caught. That'll be a Burgard first down deep into East Aurora territory. Got to respect, got to respect and love the play call tone. They were not playing it safe. Took a shot that's not been working the whole game. And a huge, huge play. Great pass, great catch. Big play by Burgard. Two minutes left. East Aurora is going to have to start using their timeouts now. If you think about it, if you're Burgard and you throw an interception on the place like a punt. Right, yeah, absolutely. So you're really not hurting yourself if that were to happen, but uh -huh. it worked out uh, to benefit their offense. I, I'm really surprised East Aurora didn't take a timeout here. That, I mean, you're under a minute 40 when they snapped the ball. Shotgun, Washington Hampton in the backfield. Hand off to Hampton up the middle. Gets to up to about the 30. Clock stopped. So a four yard pickup for Hampton. I'd like to know what he's rushed for tonight. How many rushing yards? Yeah. yeah. He's, had, he's had a heck of a game. There's no doubt about that. He is a workhorse. There's no question. This is a game a tale of two halves. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. First half East Roar, second half Burgard. Yep, yep. And, and, you know, we're talking about the adjustments Burger, I believe, offensively, you know, just running it down their throats. But how about defensively, too? Yeah. You know, they couldn't stop East Aurora, other than the interception, they couldn't stop them at all. Right. Uh, and East Aurora's really had trouble moving the ball. I'm in a minute 27, two more timeouts. Another first down. You're almost in limbo. You almost want to let them score <laughs> to get the ball back. Here come the Bulldogs. Shotgun for Eaglin. Burgard sticking with this formation. Hand off to Hampton on the left side, cuts it back inside. Gets it close to the 25 yard line, maybe even more. We'll see where they spot it. Third down and two. Another first down to him, they, they could kneel on it. There's only one more timeout. They'll only be able to stop the clock one more time. Yeah, you notice how they're just going with Hampton now and uh, yeah. taking it out of Washington and Eaglin. Well, I think you want to give your most, the guy you know won't put it on the ground. Exactly. You know I mean? Washington scared them with a couple of, uh, <laughs> even though he was yeah. down, he still scared the coach. You know, I, I was semi-joking a minute ago, but you, you may want to consider letting him score at this point. You know, because if they get a first down, they're going to kneel on it. Yeah, then it's game over. It's game over. If they score, you, you know, if you hold them from the two-point conversion, you still, it's a one-point game. But then you still got to, you still got to go the distance. Uh, absolutely. But at least maybe a it's chance. It's a chance. It, right? Like, right. Yeah. 
at the, you know, at this point, you just want to try to extend the game the best that you can. But more importantly, get a stop here, and it's fourth down, right? Third down and two for Burgard. 117 remaining. Eaglin, handoff. Is that Washington? See, did he get the first or not? Looks a hair short. Clock running. Chose not to use a timeout. Do they have one left? No, they used it uh, last drive. Burgard in no hurry to uh, run the play. So if they hold them here, they'll get the ball with about 20 seconds left. I think I, if I'm Berg, I'd just give it to Hampton. Nope, Eaglin's going to keep it himself. He might have enough for the first. We'll see where the official spot it. It's game over if he got the first. Are they going to have to bring the chains out or no? Looks like they're going to, yeah. Yeah, they'll bring the chains out. What's your guess, Tom? I'm going to say he has it. And I'm not being a homer on that. <laughs> I just think that he had a little bit enough momentum. Yeah. I'm going to say he's a hair enough short. Enough surge. I'm going to say he's a hair short, but it's really tough for my view. to. And I don't have the, exactly the best eyes in the world. First down. First down. Burgard players celebrating on the sidelines. You really got to give the Burgard, you know, these kids some credit because in the first half they were kind of all over the place, you know, a lot of nerves, fumbling snaps, dropping balls. Came out the second half, looked like a completely different team and really used their size and just ran it down their throat and basically just kept East Aurora offense off the field. Almost, I think they only had two drives the entire second half. Right. And, and East Aurora, this, this, is, this is a team to watch out for in the, that's going to be doing good things. I like some of the things that I see on their squad. Yeah. And, and that'll do it. That ends the game with our final. Burgard 22, East Aurora 21. We'll take a break, come back with some post-game action. WNY Athletics presents High School Football. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. Rank the number one real estate site for sellers. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. Get started today at howardhanna.com. See new car? Forget about it. How about home? Forget about it. Does it get good rates? Forget about it. And you're saying there's no problem too big for this guy? Forget about it. Oh, this is Johnny, the guy we've been talking about. Johnny, Paul Wolf. Mr. Wolf, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for the invite. Not a problem. It's Paul, not Mr. Wolf. Oh, sorry, Paul. Johnny, forget about it. For all your insurance needs, call 835 Wolf. And. Forget about it!
hopefully tomorrow we should have this place back. So we'll be back tomorrow night. I want to thank our sponsors again. Who do we have sponsors? I mean, Howard.